how are you doing today on this lovely morning? I mean, it's morning in my time zone, but it might be afternoon or probably night time in your zone. I mean, I don't know, but you're joining in to have a ton of fun for a couple of hours. I mean, we're going to take the stream, uh, we're going to take over the Emelette stream for about uh, three and a half hours, I think. I think, I think we, it can be more than that, but for that much amount of time. And I'll tell you what we're going to do today. We're going to go kickstart this workshop. This is an introduction to uh, Thread Security by Elastic Workshop. And then we're going to play a game of schedule. So whatever it is that you are here for, I'm sure you're here for a ton of fun. And honestly, it's been a while uh, since, you know, we have, we've had this live stream. And I've really, really missed you all. All right, so hello everyone. I see, yes, yes, it is Sashrika from Emelette. So for those of you who have just joined in for the first time and don't know who I am, my name is Sashrika and I am a hackathon product specialist and a coach for the for the APAC region for Major League Hacking. Major League Hacking is a global hacker community, as you all know, as you all can see from the comment section, what a lovely community we have here. So I'm really excited to see you all and I love the vibe you all uh, bring to the show as well. So welcome everyone. And before you begin, I want you all to let me know and let everyone know who's joining us for the first time. What is it that we do the minute we join in the stream? What is it that we do? Everyone, comment section. We are live. We are excited. We are hyped up. But what it is that we do for the first time we join a stream? All right. That's absolutely correct. Utkarsh gets the point because we check in. That's absolutely correct. So for every one of you all who are joining in, we're going to have a ton of fun in the stream. But before we do that, it's important that we check in because, hey, let me I'll let you in on a secret. The more points you have, the, the, to, the more chances you have on being on top of the leaderboard. And in our stream, we learn a lot of points. And that's not just by checking into the workshop, but by completing a bunch of other things that we can do. Some tips here, some tricks there, and you're going to make it to the top of the leaderboard in no time at all. So check in now at hackp.ac slash elastic workshop for this particular live stream. And if you've not registered for in it yet, what are you waiting for? There are tons and tons of things that we have planned for you for the entire week. So what you need to do is Check into hackp.ac slash elastic workshop and also check into hackp.ac slash init. I'm going to show you that in just a minute so that you all can do it together with me. But let me just welcome a couple of friendly folks here, right? There are so many interesting folks here. And I'm seeing I'm seeing like so many of you joining us, like you're joining us from local hack day and then joining us again on in it. So let's give a warm welcome to everyone who's joining us for the first time at in it. Welcome everyone. This is a global hacker community and we love you all for joining us today at Everlet in it for like, we want to kickstart the season with two times more zeal than the previous one. And we're going to have that. So, uh, all right, friends, we have a question. Just hold on. Wait a second. All right. What are the advantages of having points? With these points, you make it to the top of the leaderboard. And if you join a guild, your guild wins the challenges that we have. Right. So it's yeah, the bragging rights that come. Of course, it's amazing. I mean, earning these points have so many benefits. I can't even begin to tell that. But if you need to know more, just head over to discord.mlh.io, join a guild and friend, like anyone, like everyone would be just jumping at the chance to explain it to you and to help you navigate through it all. If you need some help, my go by the name Sashuka on Discord itself. Ping me and I'll help you. All right. All right. Um, let me see. <laughs> Thank you so much for the these kind words. I mean, I love it. I mean, I understand that it's actually been a while. Uh, after in it, uh, we haven't done as many long streams and we haven't taken over the MLH live stream uh, with that much excitement, right? Uh, did that much excitement. I mean, I am super stoked, as you all can see. Uh, this has been a wonderful morning so far. I've been preparing for this particular workshop for quite some time, and I know that you're going to have a bunch of fun. I've, I've planned some tricks here, some tricks there for you all to make it as beginner friendly as possible. And we're going to walk through entire, like all of it in just a simple sh uh, short step so that you all can follow along. Yes, woohoo, I'm excited too. And I can see a lot of excitement in the comment section. So, all right, let's start with the first step, which is checking in and registering. So I'm going to uh, share my screen. So bear with me for a minute while I navigate my way through this uh, setup. <laughs> All right, give me one second. OK, let us see. 
Okay, a question. How long would this work? This workshop generally takes for about two hours. Uh, so if you uh, want to like skip in the middle or want to join a little later, that's completely fine. Uh, the slides, the slides are up at the link that I'm just going to share. So if you want to follow along, that's completely fine as well. But I would really, really, really encourage you. And I would really feel nice if you stick by me to the end. I mean, it's two hours. You can devote two hours to your favorite coach, can't you? All right, let's see. Uh, Chrome tab. Okay, let us see which one is it. First off, before we move on to anything else, this is something that I really, really want you to do uh, is register to in it. I mean, come on, where are you guys at? Where are you folks at? Head over to hackp.ac slash in it and click on the register and check in button now. If you do that, I've already done that because, hey, I was there in the closing ceremony and I already did that for my point. So if you haven't done it already, you click on this button and it says you're checked in. Once it says you're checked in, you got yourself a point. And you, got, you can also see some of the amazing, amazing sessions that we have planned for you. And that's not all. There's so many exciting surprises for you. So just scroll through it, pick your favorite session, and register for it. Right now, we are right about here where we are doing an introduction to Elastic Security Workshop. And right after that, I'm going to play a game of Sketchful.io with you. This is going to be very competitive, I must tell you that, friends. So uh, this is a Sketchful.io workshop soon after that. And then we also have a built a calculator workshop later that's hosted by other there, I think. So check it out. Check out the schedule to register for your favorite events. and. Uh, you'll get reminders in Discord. So you haven't joined any, join your guild at Discord. So that is it for the Init works in it check-in. Now let us quickly see what we have to do in order to register for our event. That is the Elastic Workshop. The link is up on the screen. It's happy.ac slash Elastic Workshop. So let me share my screen and show it to you how we do that. All right. So I'm not registered for this one yet because I wanted to show you all how we do it. So here the screen is up. All right. I think I just pointed out in the wrong direction. Mirror imaging. Here is the screen up. So you can see that I'm not registered or checked in yet. And I'm going to teach you how you can do it. So all you need to do is go up here and you can see this register button, this blue button right here. Once you click on it, if you haven't logged in, it'll just prompt you to log in uh, there in the MLH database. And if you do, it's all done. And once you register, you're already checked in because it's the work. The workshop is right now, and you're checking right now. So register to attend the workshop, and that is all. Once you register and once you check in, you are all set and good to go. Where can you see your points? A very good question, Mipasha. So to see your points. Tune in for the leaderboard every day at 12 p.m. Brian and Mary come live to update the leaderboard, and they help you, uh, you know, with any every other thing that you have, any other queries, any other questions regarding in it, MLH, anything else in general that you might want to know, they are here for you. Uh, the leaderboard updates every day then, so that so you have like an entire day to earn points and then see where you stand on the leaderboard. So go ahead, join a guild and get help uh, to navigate through all those point system. We have a couple of experienced hackers. They were there at local hack day, share, build, and they know how the drill works, right? They know there are a couple of bunch of surprises here and there, but they know everything about it, and they'll be able to help you much better than anyone else. So come on, join a guild right now, and I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna share my screen in a bit, but let me just see. There are a couple of uh, I think comments that I've missed. Oh, there are a lot of uh, good shout outs for. A couple of girls here. So if you want to just look at the comment section, it's brimming with a bunch of you know girls. We have some exciting girls. We've got the Hard Gang, we've got Eddie Hub, Hack the Mountains, Dancer Who Codes, a couple of shout outs here and there, quarters of oak. I can see that there are so many interesting ones. So you just take your pick and then uh, join the one that you're most in love with. Right, right, all uh, right, all right. We're gonna now start a guild war right here, right now. I mean, it's a friendly competition. We're here to learn something new, and everyone is earning points. So, all right, can you join multiple guilds? The answer is, I think, no. <laughs> you should join one guild and be dedicated to that guild. It's like a family of yours, you know. It's just, it's just that feeling that you have, you know, in a community. So, right. All right, so without wasting anyone more, any more time, let me just quickly present and share my screen so that we can start this amazing workshop, friends. All right, okay. Let me see, let me see. All right, once you see my screen, you need to let me know, all right? Yes, let's go. 
Now, before we begin, I need some hype in the comment section. Come on, everyone. I know you all can do it. So show me how excited you are for this workshop. And there you go. Yes, give me a yay, give me a woohoo, or give me a whatever it is that you do to show that you are hyped up. All right, the comment section is actually brimming with so much excitement. I mean, I'm thrilled to see you all. And in between that, we've got a couple of questions which says that what exactly is threat hunting? Don't worry. Uh, this is a very beginner friendly workshop. I'm going to explain each and every step uh, to you, each and every word, each and every term that we're going to use in this workshop so that you are all prepared. At the end of this workshop, you'll realize that it's very easy to start threat hunting using Elastic Security. It's pretty simple. It's an easy step. And I'll tell you something else as well. So if you're joining this, uh, this workshop for the first time, I've never like tried it before and never tried Elastic Security. We're also going to you know, do a couple of fun challenges with Capture the Flag, and it's going to be a great competition. So you're in for a thrilling ride. And I can al already see that there is so much excitement in the comment section, and I love to see it. All right, friends, it is time to start with the Elastic, uh, workshop, Elastic Security Threat Hunting Workshop. And let me just pull up my screen so that I can see all your comments at the same time I present. Now, I'm going to keep this as much beginner friendly as possible, as I said, but I'm going to do one more thing for you all. And that is that I'm going to keep the comment section right beside my presentation. So if you have any questions in between the workshop, feel free to jump in and ask. It's very simple, and you'll be able to navigate through it in no time. And I trust you all. You are geniuses right here. I love you all for you know being so excited about this workshop as excited that i am as i am now if you have any questions in between feel free to stop me there ask a question and i'll respond to as many as i can all right okay so this is an mlh local host workshop introduction to threat hunting using elastic security we're gonna start that and before we do let me just quickly introduce myself so hi everyone, my name is Sashra Kakor and those, for those of you who don't know me, I'm here to lead your session and help you learn something new today. I'm a village coach for the APAC region and as you all can see, everyone loves me. <laughs> I'm just a delight. <laughs> so my, I'm graduated from IGDUW New Delhi. I just completed my graduation. I'm super excited for my new job. Yes, if you're following me on Twitter, you might know that. <laughs> Uh, so, and my favorite programming language and tool is Kotlin. So use the comment section to let me know and introduce yourself in the comment section. Let's create a community here. Tell me your name. Tell me your favorite programming language and uh, or tool, whatever it is that you love to use. And we're going to start with this workshop. So I'm going to give you a minute to do that. And while you do that, there's one more thing that you should definitely do. All right. So here it goes. Now. Welcome to MLS Local Host Introduction to Threat Hunting Using Elastic Security, as I said. Why, what I want you all is to uh, create a, you know, a fear of missing out in for everyone. I know that in it is amazing. You all are enjoying. You all need to tweet what you are, what you're having the most fun at. You know, if it's this workshop, if it's something on Discord, anything that you are doing. Let your friends know what you are all up to. Learn with the crowd, right? So these are a couple of things that you can use to let us know that you are doing that. And I'll get you, give you something else. There are points for a bunch of things. And I'm sure that there's points for Twitter medias. And you can, you'll hear about it in a couple of seconds. But do, make sure that you do. So if you want to tweet that, use the event hashtag in it. And you can use the Twitter handles, ML Hacks. My Twitter handle is Sashruka Kaur. So go ahead and tag me in your wonderful tweets. And I'll make sure that I try to retweet uh, most of them. All right, so this is a great start to our workshop. And I can see a bunch of interesting comments there about your favorite tool. We have some great JavaScript and Python lovers. And one of them even loves Haskell. Lovely. I've never tried Haskell before. And I'm sure, but I'm sure it's pretty cool. And I can see a lot of people are, uh, you know, commenting that Python is their favorite uh, language. And that is pretty awesome. I got one for Kotlin. A fellow friend loves Scotland here just as I am, uh, just as I do. So great, great, awesome, amazing. I love you all for being so participative. All right, you already tagged me in a tweet. Utkarsh is way ahead of you. Utkarsh, hats off to you for uh, already making a tweet and letting everyone know that you're having fun here and they need to get in on the fun right now if they've not already participated yet. <laughs> 
Lovely. All right. So let's start. This is a, uh, these are the things that we were going to cover in this entire workshop. So let me just explain how we're going to do this. Let me just explain you the drill of my local host workshops. As you all know, it's an interactive workshop. We'll be chatting all along the way. But these are the couple of checkpoints that we have set. Now, what does the checkpoint mean? Anyone? Any takers? No? All right. I'm going to explain it to you. So in this in these checkpoints, what we're going to do is we're going to cover a bit and then we're going to wait. Uh, for a couple of minutes so that everyone can be on the same page as everyone else. So once we finish the checkpoint, we're going to wait. And what we're going to make sure is that everyone else is on the same page. We're going to help everyone in the comment section. So if you're done with something, make sure you head over to the comment section and help others out. It's a great community that we have created here. And we know that we love each and every one of you. And we're not going to leave even a single participant behind. So that's what we're gonna, that's what we'll make sure here. And what is that? And every checkpoint, we'll wait, we'll get everyone on board on the same page as everyone else, and then we're going to move forward, right? We are actually uh, a little bit on short of time because we just have like about two hours. So I need all the support that I can so that everyone else, everyone can, you know, learn along the way and not be not be left out. So I need your help, friends, and I'm sure that you can do it with me. All right. Uh, okay, someone just joined in. This is only my username. Just join in and you're late. You should not be late. But even if you are, no worries at all. Just head over to hackp.ac slash elastic workshop and check in for your event and then come back right here. We've not started yet. We're just going to start in a minute. So quickly, quickly go ahead and check in and then be back here on Twitch. All right. I like that username too, Ashwin. <laughs> all right. So now let's talk about Major League Hacking. Now, if you are just joining in right now, uh, no worries. Just head over to hackp.ac slash Elastic Workshop. We're all here to wait for you and bring you up on speed. We've not started with anything yesterday. We're just chit-chatting and we're just, you know, getting up to speed with what everyone else has been doing uh, the last time we, from the last time we were on stream, right? So go ahead, check in, and then just be back right here, and we're going to start, all right? So now we've been talking about major league hacking now every one of you who's who's here who's joining us today might already know what major league hacking is but just in case you're joining us for the first time and have no idea whatsoever don't worry i'm here to help you out and you can trust me i'm going to explain to you every bit of it as i said every word that is in this slide i'll explain it to you all right so major league hacking is a global hacker community as i just said so our mission is to empower hackers just like yourselves so our events are meant to bring hackers together so they can learn, build, and share. You see, you see what I did there? <laughs> now, Major League Hacking is a great uh, community for you to get started with anything that you want to learn. You can find your tribe. You can vibe with them. You can learn something new. Uh, some quick facts about us is that every year we support more than a uh, 100,000 hackers we create, uh, who create about 12,000 projects, and we help them. Uh, we empower them with the right tools for them to use that and you know help them grow more we're now expanding to 400 cities and it's growing every day so it's exciting isn't it every day we're going to create a global community and that word means so much to us now we hope that you learned something incredibly awesome today if you want me if you want to find more resources or need more help just head over to mlh.io and you can get everything that you need right up there all right let's see what we're going to learn today shall we uh, but before that, let me just quickly check the comment section to see if everyone else is on page. And uh, then I'm going to talk about what we're going to do today. All right. Uh, OK, OK, OK. Totally new. Please help me know what's happening. Of course. So we're hosting a workshop. This is what we're going to learn today. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute. This is a major league hacking local host workshop. And I'm, we're going to guide you all through it so that you can learn threat hunting using elastic security. It's pretty simple when you see it that way. All right. Hey, everyone. A couple of folks just joined us. Just please welcome them. Like, Give them a warm welcome. A couple of folks just joined us. Help them out to check in. And I'm going to talk about what, we'll, what, what we will learn today through this workshop. All right? Give them some hype and show them some support. All right. So as I said before, this is a workshop where we're going to introduce you to threat hunting using elastic security. We're going to learn how to set up elastic stack if you don't know what elastic stack is don't worry i'm going to explain you that in a bit and we also use elastic security for sim to search data sources for attacks right so sim is security information and event management you see that siem written right there that's what it is 
So security information and event management, we'll talk about what that means. And uh, when we talk about Elastic Tag, that entails Elastic, Logstash, and Kibana. These are the tools that we use for Elastic Tag, Elastic Tag, and this is something that we're going to help in this workshop. So welcome, hackers. Welcome, everyone. And I hope you are all excited and hyped up for this workshop. So I'm going to just jump right into introduction to Elastic Security. So all right, if you're going to grab a cup of coffee, now is the time. If you're going to grab something to eat, now is the time. But now, after that, I want you all dedicated to your computer screens because right after this moment, we're going to be in a very fast-paced motion. We're going to learn thread hunting with Elastic Security, and we're going to go step by step. So I want you all to just pay attention. All right, focus, friends, focus. So. As I said, this is a checkpoint. I hope everyone is done, uh, you know, with their check-ins, with everything else. Let me just quickly see if you are facing any issues. Should I know how to use Elastic for this? Absolutely not. Not even a bit. You should not know Elastic Security. I'll explain that to you. That's my job. I'll help you out with that. <laughs> All right. Let me see. If you have not already checked in, check in now, friends. And... If you want to, you can go ahead and tweet uh, whatever you're learning through this workshop so that others can learn from you as well. All right. All right, all done. Let's get started. Everyone's done with checking. Give me a quick done in the comment section, and I'm going to start in just exactly a minute. Ready to rock? Absolutely. I am too. <laughs> yes, of course. We're going to wait for you just exactly a minute. So it's uh done 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 a lot of you folks are done and i love you all for that amazing i absolutely love this community because you're so on top of things i'm so proud of you <laughs> all right a uh, bunch of you are done we waited a minute i hope you all you are done as well sanskar okay all right let's rock cool okay okay let me just pull back the slides up all right, so now that we're going to start with introduction to Elastic Security, let's do that. Uh, it's if, if, you, if it's your first time, don't worry. This is a is this is a beginner friendly workshop, and it's very interesting, right? I'm going to jump into it, and you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Okay, all right. So let's talk about cybersecurity, friends, because right now we are talking about threat hunting, right? So we have to know what other terms are associated with these terms to understand that better. Am I right? Am I right? Yes, let's go. So let's talk about cybersecurity. Now, cybersecurity is a huge field. And when I say huge, I mean that there are so many careers that you can uh, take from cybersecurity. There are so many interesting things that you will learn in cybersecurity. And threat hunting is just one of them, right? So it includes technologies, processes, practices we use to design our pro you know, to protect our stuff we care about. Anything from your uh, as little as your Facebook account to as huge as your uh, you know bank accounts per se. Everything needs a, a security when you are in the cyberspace, right? So this is a very important term now that you can, now that you see that. Now, what do you think cybersecurity means to you? Mention that in the comment section and tell me if you know about any recent security breaches that were like a huge, uh, you know, a huge deal out there in the market. So just check up on that and we're going to talk about cybersecurity while you do so. So now this uh, cybersecurity, like what does it mean when we say, you know, we want to protect our stuff? It means that we want to protect our networks, devices, programs, data from attack for any damage or breach or any other unauthorized access that we, uh, you know, that we face. So any of these things could mean protection from could could mean that you need protection from you know the cybersecurity stuff. Right. Domino's India Data League, Facebook League. There are a ton of examples that you can see uh because of you know because of such situations. And right now I'm gonna tell you something. All of these examples are a great way for you to learn that why cybersecurity is important, right? There's so many of them. I mean the list is endless. Uh, so all you need to do is figure out, uh, you know, how you can stop those or how you can detect those. And, you know, you might be able to solve a couple of problems when you're creating your own products one day. Yes, absolutely. There are so many things. A major breach. <laughs> Leaked all your pizza orders. Absolutely, it did. 
All right, so a couple of examples of a hardware network security. I'm going to give you some of that. It's like, you know, you're physically locking your computer or server even behind a door or in a drawer. Or while we talk about software, it might be firewalls, secure passwords, access protocols. So there are a bunch of things where you can talk about network security. And these are just a couple of examples. So why is it important? As we said, we have to talk about trust. Trust that is within our community, trust that about uh, our servers, right? We're going to you know, talk about all of that. When we talk about security, our data is valuable, right? Data is so important. There's so much of financial information, personal information, everything else is online. And if you don't trust the companies who store it, why are you going to use the products? You're not going to feel comfortable using those. Am I right? So it is really important that we talk about security in order to gain that trust. I really like that trust fall image that you see right there. You see what we did there? Do you see that? <laughs> oh my goodness, you're still on the Domino's uh, data leak thing, aren't you? <laughs> Wonderful. Now let's talk about security breach. Focus, everyone, focus. Let's come back here. Let's not go and dive into the world of you know uh, security breaches. Let's talk about what a security breach is. Right. So in 2001, hackers stole personal details of 77 million PlayStation user accounts. I'm going to give you a couple of examples here. Right. So just like, bear with me for a minute and you're going to understand the intensity of what I'm talking about. So in 2001, as I said, hackers stole personal details of 77 million PlayStation accounts. There was another one where a student creating a phishing scheme to gain access to their school network and modify the grace in 2018. And let's face it, we all have thought about it once, but we've never had the courage to do it. Uh, because, I mean, it's a security breach. It's a security breach. That's something we can't do. And last year, Google's login system failed. Uh, I mean, users couldn't log in into any of the Google services for an hour. So all of these are great security breaches. And we might not understand the impact of all of these so deeply, but it's very intense because this is, you know, a, this is something which has created a lot of havoc and a lot of chaos in the market as well. So when I talk about the PlayStation hack, I'm going to give you a couple of things and then I'm going to explain why I told you all of this, right? So when we talk about the PlayStation hack, it's basically what type of breach it is. Uh, breach it is. We see that it was a confidentiality piece. Now users lost the privacy of their data. We interested in our organization with our details and a hacker stole it, and that is a great privacy or a breach of data. The second thing this meant a student was you know created a phishing scheme to modify that network uh, to modify their grades uh the student did an integrity breach data what was modified uh you can no longer trust what the data was inside that school network right a great loss at such and as for the last example that was a temporary accessibility breach users couldn't access their own data for that amount of time so what I'm trying to emphasize here is that network security isn't always a shady hacker person breaking into a computer. It sometimes is. Sometimes it is. I'm telling you that it is. But I mean, that's the image we have in our head, isn't it? Sometimes it's just an internet failure, a software breakage, or any other issues. And all of these are security breaches, right? All of these are some things we need to take care of while building products, if you want to build scalable products. So just like. I know we are, whenever we talk about security breaches, our brain just goes over to that shady hacker who's just working in the dark and is, who wears a hoodie, something like that. That's just a bias. I mean, come on. There are a bunch of other things that we can talk about right here. <laughs> Absolutely. OK, I see. I mean, I missed a couple of like explaining all of this. I just missed a couple of your comments. I'm just reading up on those so that so I can see it and not miss anything else. But wow. <laughs> I see that you all are having fun about the security breaches. I mean, come on, friends. We're talking about something really, really important here. <laughs> okay, let's talk about the CIA tribe. So what does that mean? Now, I'll give you a bunch of examples, right? If you want to read up on those examples, I'm going to share a couple of links in Discord. Once this is over, you can brush up your information about all of these security breaches and a couple of other things that's happening around the world. But let's talk about a CIA tribe and what that means. Now, when we talk about security, there are three things that we are talking about. First is availability, integrity. Uh, the second is integrity. And the third one is confidentiality, right? So when I talk about these, what does it mean? Together, these three are known as the CIA triad. And in the previous example, this is where I'm going to connect the previous example to the slide. So when I asked about information security, 
confidentiality is the most likely that first comes into your mind because we tend to think of hackers people who are trying to steal information and you know what not so can any unwanted parties access the data that is what question you need to keep in mind when you talk about confidentiality similarly when you talk about availability or integrity there are core principles that must be thought about and prevented against availability means that can the users access their data when they need to i mean we need to understand breach but the users need also need to access their own data they have a right to do that and when we talk about integrity we say that does that mean that the data remains unaltered that there's no change to it and with the previous example like for example the playstation example was definitely a confidentiality breach so i'm going to ask you a couple of questions before we move on right so we gave, i gave you a couple of examples i talked about the playstation hack and how it was a confidentiality breach let me know which one among the other two the student and the uh, the student one and the google uh, breach that we saw about which one was it was it the availability breach the integrity breach or the confidentiality breach let's talk about the student uh, hack that he did so he modified his grade data was modified which type of breach was it was it the a was it i or was it c definitely it's like it's it's an all in a cia thing but whatever it is let me know in the comment section which do you think it was student modified that grade data was changed and it was a breach what type of breach was it absolutely it was an integrity breach a couple of you were right a couple of you just swayed there for a minute but yes it was an integrity breach data was modified data did not remain unaltered so it was an integrity breach straight up and the last one we discussed was the google breach so it was what was that what according to you was the google breach that happened all right google was a what do you think it was availability a google was availability breach absolutely you are absolutely correct my friends it was a temporary accessibility breach which means that it was an availability breach users couldn't access their own data for about a couple of hours and that was insane that was not something they expected right awesome thanks for being so uh, you know on top of things i'm glad that you understand all of it so let's talk about threat detection now that we understand a couple of terms around it it's time to like dive into it and get our hands dirty right so let's talk about threat detection there are security issues as we mentioned uh, security issues or threats uh, all have like a cause and we are here to determine what cause it was who did it and in order to do that we need tools right we need tools to in order to detect that because we just not going to look at those logs and understand what is happening right there we need to have tools on hand that can help us detect these threats without them security breaches can have a devastating effect on the user safety and trust so there are a bunch of things and absolutely i can see that you all are on fire because you all will write with all of those breaches you understand what security means i'm so proud of you all so let's talk about endpoint security right so there are a couple of terms that i'm putting uh, like putting all out there so that you understand it but i'm going to connect all of it just in a couple of slides right so bear with me for a minute if you just don't know what uh, like what fits in exactly where just to understand the terms and if you have any question in between that moment uh, like in between the point from here to the point i'll explain and put everything together feel free to ask that in the comment section and i'll take that up in a minute all right so i was saying uh, we were talking about endpoint security any device that's connected to a network is an endpoint now what do i mean when i talk about the uh, endpoint security right protecting endpoints is a feature of elastic security and that is something that we look into this workshop what are we protecting them from is the question we're protecting them from malware ddos attacks hacking attempts and more on that later but point was uh, the whole point about this was these endpoints could be visitors to your website or users of your software and it's our duty to protect them but how do we do it and that is what we're going to learn in these workshops so how i hope that this point is clear because now we're going to jump into investigating attacks and we're going to talk about the attacks that happen on all of these things all right yes friends all of you ready all set let's talk about investigating attacks shall we so i believe we want to protect our networks from ever being attacked in the first place right we don't want any attacks at all but that isn't always the case so uh, we want that sometimes an attack that has already happened we need to know how to work out like we need to know how it happened to work out a solution to ensure that it doesn't happen ever again and that's what we're going to learn today attack is already there we want to learn how to stop it and we want to learn how to identify it and the best way to do it is logs logs and logs that actually there's about three ways to do it 
So networks produce a lot of data. Every request to visit a site or serve some data will generate log data. Now you might be familiar with logs without even realizing it. I mean, tell me in the comment section, friends, have you ever written a print or a system dot out statement in a form of a program to actually debug your program program to see what went wrong and you know what exactly did you mess up with your code to find the bug per se? Did you? Did you? You did. That's a form of login. Absolutely. A piece of information that tells us what is going on inside your program. It's absolutely helpful for us to debug it and you know a website now this is the same when we talk about uh you know uh, networks they produce a lot of log, log data and you, they generate that log data these are plain text files that contains a lots and lots of lines of data but it's our duty to like you know uh, you know divide them into things that so that we can visualize them better uh, a website log might include information like your visitor's IP address, your time zone, your country, and more. So there are a bunch of things that happen. Here. Like, for example, if you have a smartphone tethered to your computer, you can view the logs of apps that are running on it. For Android, for example, you can run a simple ADV logs from the command line, and you can view all those logs that you are that are generated when you open or use different applications. So if you're an Android developer, you might be able to relate to it because we can see all those logs. We can see what's happening when we launch an app, right? So, all right. Yes, absolutely. This is something that we all have done. Uh, and this is something that helps us detect what went wrong with the application. It's very, very useful. Absolutely. So now, logs don't just come from the web or anywhere else, right? It's any application that uses, that you generate, like generates data is something we have, we can observe and we can detect what's wrong. So. For that, in order to do that, we want to find the correlation. That means that we need to find patterns across different types of logs, sequences on multiple sources of data that might help us find our security breach. There's a pattern to it. And this is what is what we are what we're gonna do here. We're gonna find that pattern, we're gonna find that sequence so to understand it better. You know, so correlation is your turn. And here, friends, finally, the moment arrives where I introduce you the elastic stack. I mean, I'm not even sure if I'm pointing towards the right direction because, you know, mirror image, I am not elastic stack. <laughs> All right. So elastic stack, what is it? Elastic stack is uh, some elastic builds real time, scalable enterprise search, observability and security solutions on a single tech stack that can be deployed anywhere. So elastic stack is free open source tool that developers like all of us right here can use to organize more effectively and search log data with ease. So it's that easy to use, and I'm gonna teach you how to do it in just a minute. All of you are hyped up, I hope, and do, now, now I talked about a bunch of things here, right? And it's gonna just you know bundle up in your brain and you're not sure what is happening right here. Let me put that in a simple and easy way for you all. The Elastic stack has three main parts, as mentioned in the previous slide. Uh, there's search, there's observe, and there's product. So what does these three mean? Now, we'll take a, cl look, like a closer look at each and every one of them. We'll talk about each and every one of them in detail, right? So we're going to talk about that. Uh, but a couple of use cases that I'm going to mention just right there so that you have an idea is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And we're going to like talk about all of these things in detail. So don't worry. There is, these are a bunch of terms for you right now. But I promise you, at the end of this workshop, you'll be a pro at it. You'll know what it means. So let's talk about search, shall we? Elasticsearch is a free and open search engine, as mentioned. It, it'll help you to search through massive data sets, right? It's it's all about, you know, uh, it's as I said, it's free and open means that products and stack is available to use freely for developer use. So there are a couple of examples that I can quote here, and you can search your own examples too. But for example, companies like Pfizer, which is a COVID-19 producer, you might have heard of it. They use uh, it to search through their in so, you know, to their all their scientific data to find out more information. So Elasticsearch is a way to, you know, search through those massive data. And that is just one component of an entire big stack, right? Second is observe. Now, by bringing logs, metrics, and APMs, APMs is application performance monitoring. Now, before I move on to what all of this means, let's talk about application performance monitoring first, right? It is like a catch-all term for how we can monitor software and any stage of its use for a website, this might be how long does it take load or, you know, make a latency network request. You know, the key metric about all of this stuff is latency. 
and it is also it can also be focused on the user experience so you need to make sure when we talk about application performance monitoring it's like a catch all job there are so many things that we talk about when we talk about application performance monitoring so by bringing all of those logs and metrics and abm and, and traces and everything together at scale in a single stack we can monitor and react to events that are happening anywhere in the environment it's and it's free and open i mean we all know that about that by now uh, don't we so as i was saying it's about all about observation to actually determine what went wrong and where it went wrong and elastic helps you achieve that now finally data ingestion what we're going to talk about here is a bunch of other things that i mentioned remember that i mentioned uh, log stash a couple of times let me tell you what it is log stash is a free and open tool that helps you to normalize and harmonize these sources of data into a more easily searchable form and store it now what do i mean when i say normalize and harmonize i mean you must ask ask me that right sashrika you're throwing a bunch of terms at us what does it mean explain absolutely normalized data is to reduce the redundant data like for example data is duplicated between two different resor uh, resources and so if you want to reduce that redundant data that is where normalization comes in and you must have heard about this in your pdec course if you're pursuing that and if not this is what it is and i'm telling you that now when i talk about harmonizing data what does that mean it means you need to bring together multiple data sources to make them more cohesive now what do i mean by that for example let's give me a, like i'll give you an example so that you understand it better you know might convert uh, json files into text or csv files or vice versa in any other format for example so it's more cohesive it's more easier for you to understand and learn all of, from all of these sources and it's an easily searchable form that you can store it all right so somebody i'm going to stop right here for a minute because somebody just mentioned that it feels like i'm sitting in a dbms class i need to know was your dbms class this interesting because i'm pretty sure i'm doing a good job at it <laughs> I mean, my DMS class was not that was not that interesting at all. But if it was interesting for you, I mean, amazing. I mean, I am doing a good job, and I'll know that, right? <laughs> all right. Yeah, mine was sad too. But again, I mean, I hope that I'm doing an interesting job at it because hey, these these are a bunch of concepts that you should know about. <laughs> You used to sleep in your DMS class. I mean, I did too. Don't tell my professor. I mean, I'm already graduated. Even if you do, then would would do me no harm. But <laughs> it was interesting. All right. So let's talk about file read. Let's just come back on the topic for a minute. We just wait away there. Right. So uh, file read. Yes, we were talking about file read. Now file read is a lightweight tool. Now what that means is it's appropriate if your logs come out on a ready baked JSON. Like for example, you have a JSON file. What the, the, all of you know that uh, the reason that we use JSON format is that for, we need it to be in a more in a way that you know it's more so easy easy for us to search, easy for us to comprehend and visualize and use tools to visualize that JSON query, right? Uh, that entire data in a JSON file. So FileBeat is the tool that helps us do that in a you know in a big JSON file so that we can use that data. So when I talk about data ingestion, there are a bunch of things that we that we cover here. That logs can come from a variety of sources. Like from the previous slide, we saw that that logs have like came from a variety of sources that includes website visits, database access, form inputs, web services. So there are a bunch of things right there. So as and as I mentioned in the previous slide, Elastic Stack harmonizes these multiple sources and brings them together to make them more searchable. And I explain what harmonizing means, right? To bring multiple sources in order to make them more cohesive. That's what I mean here. So this was a couple of things that we covered, and all of these sources might have different file types, content structures. Now, how do we combine uh, them? You know, make it easier for us to combine them into one searchable and browsable data database. This is where log stash comes in because after that we're gonna make it more easier for us to you know comprehend the data that is in front of us. Absolutely. Okay, so there's a question. Uh, they are asking what is DBMS. I'm guessing it's an Indian thing. It's not actually an Indian thing. It's more of a, a short form for database management system. So I'm not sure if that is the same term we use elsewhere, but this is something that we use here definitely. right all right so now let's talk about the third thing that we just you know uh talk about we talk about search we talked about observe let's talk about product the intention of elastic security at the end of the day is just to protect our environment right so 
when we talk about that elastic security equips analysts like some of you who might want to you know pursue this career further like us uh, to prevent detect and respond to those threats that we just mentioned the free and open solution delivers sim endpoint security threat hunting cloud monitoring and more so there are a bunch of things that are happening there and when i talk about sim you remember at the beginning of this presentation i mentioned it's called security information and event management so that is what i'm talking about here right so you need to prevent all of like your uh, systems and you also need to detect and respond to threats at the same time you need to prevent all of those threats and that is what elastic security does for us so let's put it all together friends because right now we have learned a bunch of things now there's been all for computers talking to computers there was a bunch of thing here a couple of things there but we humans we need to be able to interact with this data to actually understand it better we need to understand what is happening in front of us and not just leave a bunch of like a couple of like thousands and thousands of text files and lines and I have no idea what's happening what's like there right so that's where kibana comes in kibana is again free and open uh, which is and it's a user interface that says lets you visualize all that elastic search data right you can do anything from tracking query load to understanding the way requests flow through your app so as you can see it's a gui uh, it can display diagrams maps charts and so much more it'll make you easier to find patterns and suspicious behavior in your log, log data so now, when you think about that you have to like search through each of those log files individually if it hasn't been for kibana so we'll access kibana through your web browser and it'll be as easy and simple right so this is a bunch of stuff that uh, puts it all together and this is how you visualize your uh, you know data all right, let's talk about the use cases of Elasticsearch. As I mentioned, Elasticsearch, Logstash, Beats, that is file beats, and Kibana make up the Elastic Stack. And it's used by organizations like SAC and Oxford University to store and search their network logs and other security information, right? So I know that we covered a bunch of theory here, but it was important for you to learn. And I apologize, it, it sounded like too, too much, but uh, now we're going to talk about, um, you know, we're going to get our hands dirty and we're going to start working. But before we do that, let me just quickly finish this up by talking about SIM. So there were a bunch of other terms that I mentioned, and one of them which I missed was SIM, S I E M, which was a subsection in the field of computer security. And what SIM means is security information and event management. They are tools that help you to provide real time analysis of security alerts in networks and softwares and stuff like that. All right, don't sleep, everyone. Focus. We're going to get started with Elastic Stat and we're going to start using it right now. So, the theory part is absolutely over. No more boring stuff here. And I actually, I am not entirely sure that it was boring. I did a pretty good job at explaining all of those things. And I could see your comments. You cannot lie to me now. <laughs> it was interesting. All right. So, uh this is a bunch of things that we covered we covered about elastic stack now we're gonna start using it so it's gonna be fun and i hope that you all are ready so time for our first checkpoint friends everyone let me know if you're on the same page as i am and you're excited to get started with elastic you are excited to learn what what thing uh, what you know what you can do with it and how you can capture those flags we're gonna do a bunch of things together and i want you all to be ready and excited let's go let's rock this one absolutely i can see i mean i can see all your excitement and that makes me so excited for this workshop i can't even tell you that i understand that this workshop is pretty great i am absolutely in love with this one but your excitement makes it over the top <laughs> amazing great incredible all right so let's get started with elastic everyone all right now we're gonna walk work through a bunch of few steps you know to get you set up with elastic and you so that you can start with elastic stack so what we're going to do here today is create an elastic account first because hey that's the first step everyone knows it's the first step second we're going to deploy the elastic stack with some log data then we're going to use kibana to explore those logs and you are absolutely right sanskar we're going to capture the flag challenge you do we gonna do some capture the flag challenges yes we're gonna do cdf and it's gonna be interesting you all are gonna compete to find the flag and find the details and it's gonna be amazing i'm gonna tell you that just a bit uh in just a minute on how we're gonna achieve that but once i've given you all the necessary tools 
You can do this, and I believe in you. All right, let's talk about creating an Elastic account first. Let me quickly share this link for you all. Okay, let's see. I'm going to do that in the comment section, and let's local dot slash elastic right yes we're going to put all of that theory into use and we're going to do that just about now so your your job is to visit mlh local dot host slash elastic and then you i want you all to register uh to elastic and create an account right i'm going to show you how to do that in a minute but you can just head over to this link right now link of the presentation of course um let me share that with you so this is a link to, this is actually the check-in link that we shared, happy.ac slash classic workshop. So if not checked in, now is the time to do so. I'm going to put that up as a banner real quick so that you can see that. So for those of you who are asking for the slides link, you can head over to happy.ac slash elastic workshop, head over to that link, get yourself registered and check in. And if you're going to scroll down, you can see the participant slides and you can find those. Yes. Uh, so there's this thing. A valid.edu or .ac email address is required to uh, you know, be eligible for the trial. But don't worry if you don't have one. That is absolutely fine. I'm going to explain to you how you can you know, get settled for this workshop and get started with it. So don't worry about it. Right. So now, this is where you can you know, add your email and then uh, register for a free trial. The 30-day trial is available for a .ac or .edu address. But if you don't have that, that's absolutely fine. Don't worry. You can sign up for their 14-day trial. You can sign up for that 14-day uh, free trial that you have. And just click that 14-day free trial link of Elastic Cloud. You'll receive emails uh, for verification. And once you're through with that process, you can create your Elastic account. Does that answer your question, friends? Enter your email. I mean, you'll be able to, uh, you, like, you'll see. It's all easy and pretty simple. It's just a step-by-step -step thing. Enter your email. You can see your 14-day free trial, and then you can, uh, you know, move forward with that. What all should we select? Uh, it's actually, you can, once you register for it, you'll get that access for a 14-day free trial. Elastic search link? Absolutely. I think we just shared it. So this is the Elastic search link, mlhlocal.host slash elastic. Uh, once you register for it, Sanskar, you can read like redirect to your email and then you can see and use get started with it. There is a 14 day trial. I'm telling you that, friends. If we, even if you don't see it right now, there is there. I mean, it should be written there, but if it's not, just don't worry. Register and you'll find that link in your email. All right. Got the trial? Awesome. Wonderful. Amazing. All right. Uh, if you want to know the presentation slides or get more access to that slides, if you want to know more about this, visit happy.ac slash elastic workshop. And there you can find the participant slides at the end of it so that you can follow along. Right. Let me see. OK. All right. All right. OK. So let's talk about registering, uh, you know, and creating an elastic account. Once you're through with that, you add your email, you create a password, or you use your Google or Microsoft account, and that is when you create that email. Does it look intimidating to you all? I mean, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. It shouldn't have been uh, like that. So let me just you know spice it up for you a bit. Right now, the only thing that we're doing is creating an account. It is not intimidating. It's just a simple dashboard, right? So once you are in that, uh, I'll explain to you a bunch of things. And that is where you'll know that uh, you know it's pretty simple and easy to navigate. I know it's like a lot at the same time and kind of might feel overwhelming at first. But we'll get up on that in just a minute. All right. So register your email. And then if you don't have an .edu or .ac email, that's absolutely all right. Register with any, any email that you have. You'll get a 14-day trial instead of a 30-day one. It's like, it's all right, friends. I mean, 30 days or 14 days, you need this uh, for about two hours to get through to this workshop. And that's absolutely fine. You don't need the 30 year trial if you've got a 14 day trial. Am I correct? Am I right? You can buy, uh, you, can, you can absolutely invest in Elastic later, but right now it'll do the job. Yes, absolutely. 
All right, so let's talk about creating a lasting cloud. Once you're through with that, register, sign up, and then click on start your free trial to navigate to the Kibana user interface. Now, this might not be it, and you might see a dashboard real quick like this one, but in any ways, your trial should be registered. So if you're going through an email, you might not see this page in particular, but you'll see this page, which is deploying your elastic security. Right. If your free trial expired, just use another email and you'll be all good. Right. So start your uh, free trial and this will navigate you to the Kibana UI. And this is where we're going to start deployment. And how we just start deployment is that uh, the last option on screen would be Elastic Security. You want to click on that and then click on Create Deployment. Simple and easy, two steps. Let me repeat what we did here. Just quick scroll through. We visited this link. We clicked on a start a free trial by entering an email, any email that you want. And then after you register it uh, and then sign into your account, you see this page. You might even see this page at times. But if you see this one, click on start your free trial. If you see this one, click on Elastic Security and then click on uh, Create Deployment. And once you've started your deployment, let me know in the comment section. It'll take some minute. It like it's, it's, it's like a progress thing. Like it'll just be a little slow, but it is. It's gonna be there. It's, you're gonna reach there in no time at all. Uh, you know. So let me know once it's done. Just a heads up. So click on create deployment. This may take a few minutes. Now I'm gonna just pause here a bit so that all of you are done with the step. But just let me know like real quick so that we can go through with this one. Right, right, right. Creating deployment. Everyone, let me know once you're done. I want to see a bunch of dones here so that I can move on. And if someone you left behind, don't worry. The comment section will help you later on, even if I move forward. That's absolutely fine. We'll help you out. Just mention that in the comment section if you are just you know waiting for something to be done. We'll help you out. Creating, creating. I want the so let me know when you create it, create it. <laughs> Creating, creating, and done. So anyone, if you're done, just let me know about that. Not done, done. Now, we don't crash them. You know, nobody would crash them. Don't worry about it. <laughs> just let me know when you're done. All right, I'm going to give you a minute here. No, I don't worry. I'm going to wait for a minute for you all. If you're not getting a verify email uh, thing, just try logging into security, like Elastic Security itself, and see if you can access the dashboard. So after login, all I did was click on Elastic Security and create deployment. It's on the screen. I don't think we can zoom in. Yeah, we can't zoom in Google Slides, but it should be Elastic Security and then create deployment. Let me see if I can show it to you. I'm going to log in and see if I can try and show it to you once more. Actually, I did try it, so I'm not sure if, um, you know, it'll take me back to the dashboard or anything, but I'm going to try it. Let me see. While I wait for you all to, like, create your deployment, I'm going to register real quick so that I can be on the same page as you all are and help you out, friends. Right, I already have a thing in place. All right, while we are, I can see a lot of folks are already done. So let's move on. If you're still not done, uh, let me know in the comment section and ask for help um, You know, from the comment section. Everybody would help you out. Those of you all who are done, help others out so that everyone's on the same page. And those of you who are not done, please, please, please reach out and ask for help, friends. All right, so since most of you are done, let's talk about this. As soon as you're done, it'll take you to a page where you can click download to save your passport details. Save those password details. This is this is like a very, 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 very important step. I cannot emphasize how important this is. Unless you save it at this stage, you can't access them again. So save it right now. And once you're saved, let me know in the comment section once more. So if this happened, you need to start over the Elastic Security deployment step, the previous one, again. So I want you to save those password details right now. Make a note of it. It's It should be an Excel file that you download, and you should, uh, you should download it and save it. All right. 
Now, after we click create deployment, this may take a few minutes, so just don't worry and be there with me uh, for a minute. You know, it'll take a couple of minutes for you to set up and open Kibana. But as soon as your Elasticsearch is setting up, uh, you ha will have all the tools you need for the rest of this workshop. So after a few minutes, you can see that there's an open Kibana blue link that just popped up. And once you click on that, you'll see a Kibana dashboard, right? So uh, right now, we are deploying an instance of Elastic Security just to give you a brief on what is happening. Because right now, if, what you say, that you claim that, hey, Sashika, you're just asking us to you know, click a bunch of stuff. But what is what is actually happening there, right? So this is exactly what we're doing here is to create an account with Elastic Security and to set up Kibana. Kibana is the web UI we talked about. We'll give you a brief on you know what uh, is happening there and what your data means. It will help you visualize better, stuff like that. So, and we'll also talk about Logstash, which is a server-side data processing pipeline, and Elasticsearch for our user account. Deploying it, what does deploying mean? So, anyone, you want to help a bunch of our friends who are just starting out with the workshop and have no idea what deploying is? So, what exactly do you think deploying means? Everyone, in the comment section right now, help those who are just beginning and have no idea what this is. Yeah, so that when, uh, I, like, to answer your question, uh, it, you know, when it shows up to open Kibana, yeah. So just open, click on open Kibana and just wait there. I'll explain what to do next, but yeah. Let's talk about deploying first, right? So deploying means launching or setting, setting it all up, right? Often this involves creating a web server or an endpoint or anything else like that. And all this launching and setting up of uh, the server or anything else you want is what is deploying. And for anyone who's not have any, who does not have any idea and is like a true beginner and starting out for the first time, this is what it is. Now, when our Elastic Stack is deployed, we can send our data to Logstash from any device with, that, with an internet connection, right? Logstash, we prepare, process it to prepare it for Elasticsearch and display it on the Kibana UI. So what happened here? We send our data to Logstash. Logstash processes it for Elasticsearch and Elasticsearch displays it to Kibana UI. I hope that makes a lot of sense to you all. Yes, open Kibana, please. Open it, open it, open it. And as you open Kibana, I want you, I want, I want to welcome you all to Kibana. Kibana dashboard. Now, this is where you look at our log data. Now, this is a little empty. We're gonna add a couple of data, but once you open Kibana, this is the screen that should be visible to you. If you're getting a server error, refresh it. Uh, and it should be fine. It might be like you might be right. We might be, we might have even broken up elastic, but I, I hope that it's all right. Just refresh it and you'll be fine. Yeah, creating a deployment takes some of it, like some time, depending on your internet connection, of course. But once it's done, open Kibana and this is the page where it should be at. All right, we're going to do a bunch of steps here. So I want you all to let me know as soon as you're done and open the Kibana dashboard. Everyone, I saw that a couple of you have opened Kibana. I want you to comment again if you're done with Kibana so that I can move forward. Just let me know where you all are. See, it's a live stream. It's an online workshop. I will not know. Like, I can't see your screen. So you have to tell me when you're done so that I can move forward with the same face. I can see a lot of you are done. Lovely. All right. Uh, can you all see the Kibana page, uh, Kibana dashboard? Right? Right? Yes. Absolutely. Awesome. Amazing. So. You can see that there is on the top right corner, you can see a button that says add data. Can you see that? Click on that button. Click on the button add data. And if you click on that button, it'll take you to a page, which is a file beat page that you can see. Right? Uh, I'll talk about the file beat page, but I hope that you can see that. So what I did here is once you open Kibana, the, uh, we need to like add data there to actually visualize it because, hey, you cannot visualize anything if you don't have data. Like, what, what are you going to visualize then? So we're going to add that data here. We're going to add logs, right? So uh, click on logs, select logs, and then there are a bunch of options there. I'll explain some of them, but there are like so many, so many of them, right? You can find out more about this later for the sake of this workshop. We're going to use Apache logs. You can use others as well. So there are different sources of logs that you can use to input data for Elasticsearch. Uh, Apache is very common. It's an open source web platform. It's used to host about all about all of the third party websites that we see. 
We're going to use some of the Apache log data for our capture the flag challenge at the end of this workshop. I'm super excited for that. Uh, there are a couple of other options as well. For example, Azure, which is a Microsoft hosting platform, mm -hmm. and there's ActiveMQ, which is a Java message broker. So you can see that there are a bunch of other stuff here. But uh, I want you all to select logs and Apache logs uh, and tap on Apache logs right after that. Okay, okay, will it be available later? Ms. Sub says, absolutely. Visit hackp.ac slash elastic workshop. You'll get access to the slides and you can uh, follow along with that. Okay, did something happen? Did something happen? Did you crash? No worries. I mean, refresh it. I mean, I'm, I'm telling you, refresh it and it'll be fine. Right? Okay. Three options to add data. You need to select Apache logs. And I'm going to set, like, I'm going to give you that data. Don't worry about it. I'm sorry that you had to face mm. that way, you know, log in four times or something, but uh, I'm sure that this time when you log in, it's going to be there. I have a feeling. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> All right. Since you are done with the Apache log system, let's talk about what you're going to do. Now we're going to download FileBeat. FileBeat takes log files from your device and deploys it to the Elastic side. That's what it does. Now we're going to deploy, a, you know, install FileBeat on your system. We're going to download that. Uh, depending on if you have Mac, if you have Windows, if you have Linux, whatever it is, just select the tab and then use it to download FileBeat. So if you have Mac, there's a Mac, there should be a Mac tab. If you have Windows, there should be a Windows tab. If you're Linux users, there's a DEB RPM tab that you can use and follow the steps there. <laughs> Worked after 10 attempts. I mean, that's hopeful. <laughs> All right, I'm going to wait here for a minute before I talk to you through uh, deploying FileBeat. Uh, but just to give you a brief, FileBeat takes log files from your device, deploys them to the Elasticsearch. And the reason I'm going to take a minute here is so that you all can you know, fix these issues, talk to me about what your problems you're facing, and then I'm going to walk you through it. Now, normally, we should be installing this on a server to control ingestion of data like the one we talked about at the beginning of this presentation. But since we're just playing around and we just want to, you know, have fun with it, uh, we'll just install it on our local device to speed things up. All right, Kibana is still loading. Don't worry, it'll take a few minutes. I mean, when I tried it, it took me like about five minutes to set this all up. So don't worry if that is a scenario with you or if it's taking longer for you, just wait. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait here for a minute, don't worry. Uh, which log you should use, you should use Apache logs. There are a bunch of other options which you can try on later, but for now, I'm going to provide you that Apache log data, so please select that. Yeah, that's correct. And friends, as soon as you are done with uh, the step of you know opening Kamala, let me show you what step I'm talking about. This one, uh, where you have to select uh, Apache logs, and it opens up this page. Right? As soon as you click on Apache logs, let me know, and then I'm going to continue from there. Open file video, you are way like steps ahead. Amazing. Friends, if you are uh, like, we're waiting here for everyone to just be on the same page and we're giving it all a minute. If you're done, let me know in the comment section. If you are not done, let me know about that too so that I can help you. For those of you folks who have already done with this step, mm -hmm. you can head over to hackp.ac slash elastic workshop, get access to these slides, and then try out a bunch of other steps, you know? So let's stay ahead of the crowd and then come back here and help others. All right, it's pretty simple. It's pretty easy if you follow the participant slides. I'm going to explain all those steps in a bit, but you can try out yourself if you're already done with this step. All right. Try logging into it again, uh, closing your browser, and then uh, like logging into it again and then trying it out. All right, all right. Country, your country extracting zip files, amazing. Yes, this one is for Windows. Uh, if you want to extract zip files, uh, make sure you select the right bit. You know, if there's a 64-bit option, not the beta one, the other one. There's a zip file option, a 64-bit and 32-bit. Depending on your laptop configuration, please make sure to choose the right option for Windows. I'm going to explain that in just a second. Let me show that to you. So there are a couple of things that we need to do for downloading file beat. To 
set up file three, you need to open your terminal for Mac or Linux or PowerShell for Windows. So this is where we're going to part ways into two different directions. I'm going to tell you different steps for Mac, different steps for Windows. I want you all to be there with me, all right? All right, friends. OK, OK, OK. Yes, I see that you all are trying to do it. Uh, so let me just guide you through them. So PowerShell for Windows and Terminal for Mac or Linux. For Windows, to open a PowerShell, you need to run it as an administrator. So right click on it, click on Run our Administrator, and then we'll follow the steps to download and install file beta. For Mac, enter the curl commands that are shown on the tab. Like there should be a couple of a uh, bunch of commands that you see. And for Windows, you need to download the Windows zip file from the link provided. You need to unzip it and then run the commands as listed. Make sure you follow these steps. Download the Windows zip file, unzip it, and then run the commands. Now, for this one, you need to make sure you download the correct file. There should be a Windows zip 64 bit. There should also be a Windows zip 60, uh, 32 bit. You need to pick out which one, uh, which is like which configuration you need to download. So let's talk about how what we did after opening Kibana. I'm going to help you that for a minute while all of you are downloading all of these files. And it's, it's going to take a couple of minutes. I'm going to walk you through the steps while you do so. So once you open Kibana, click on Add Data. Uh, since Kar, I, I think uh, you and a couple of other folks were stuck at the steps, I'm going to talk, walk you through them once again, just a quick minute. Just let me know once you're done. Right, so Kibana, click on Add Data, right? And then select Logs and Apache Logs. These are the three steps that we're going to do. Add Data, Logs, Apache Logs. And then according to your device, whatever operating system you use, click on that tab and then follow the steps. Cool. And once you're following the steps, if you have Mac, enter the curl commands. But if you have Windows, make sure you download un uh, download the zip file, the right zip file, unzip that file, and run, then run the commands as listed. Right? I hope this one is easy, like, easy for you. Let me just quickly see. I'm try I'll try to share my screen and show it to all, uh, show it to you all how you can do that. Okay, Apache logs, and then let me start a screen share, and then share it again. Kibana is hating you. Oh, I'm so sorry that you feel that way. <laughs> it does not hate you. I assure you of that. Just give it a minute. See, yeah, all right. So, everyone, let me know if all of the, those who are running, uh, like who are already in the process of setting it up. Do you see this page, right? So, there's Mac OS, Dev, RPM, and Windows. Whatever it is that you have, you need to uh, follow the steps which are mentioned on the screen. I hope that you could can see that after down download. What I'll, I'll explain what you need to do after download, just download it and then just stay put. If you want, you can follow along uh, the slides through Elastic Workshop. Uh, link that's mentioned below. There's a participants like that. All right. <laughs> Try logging into it again, and then I'm going to tell you about that. So once you download all these files, you need to first, like these are the steps that you need to follow. Download that file, then unzip that folder, and then run the commands that are mentioned. You can see all of those configuration items, and you can see all of those steps here. These are the steps that I'm going to follow because I have a Windows laptop. If you have a Mac or Linux, just try out uh, you know, those steps. This should be mentioned. Mac should be mentioned here. Easy, pretty easy steps. Straight away, you need to run those commands. Let me come back to the slides so that I can follow along and help you out with that. All right, sharing my screen up again, and there you go. All right, so let's talk about this. Now you can download the Windows zip folder and unzip it. So, all right, 
before I move on, I know that some of you are like way ahead in those steps because you started working on the slides uh, and some of you are still working on the steps. So first off, everyone, let me know who's done with this step, who's done with downloading the Windows zip file and just unzipping it at least. Friends, comment section, quick. Done? Great. I, I should see like a couple of done so that I know that the step is all done with you. Awesome. Again, so now that you're done with those, let's talk about some of the other steps, right? Unzip done. Awesome. Now we're going to add your account details to connect to Elastic. If you're done with unzipping, there should be a couple of commands that you see on Windows. And same as for, uh, you know, if you're using Mac, you need to unzip that. You just need to enter those curl commands. And if, you, if it's showing many options to download, if you're using Windows, you need to download either the 32-bit file, uh, the zip 32-bit file, or the 64-bit file, depending on your computer. All right, all right, all right. Cool. So now that you're done with unzipping, let me just talk about the file B thing. Right. So now that you unzipped it and you've run the commands, you should see a file B.yml file. Let me know if you see that file. All right, I'm going to take this very slow for you all so that you all are on the same page. And if you are facing an access denied message, you should run PowerShell as an admin. All right. Yes, yes, I'm going to explain what to do with the Elastic Password bit. Just don't be good. Go, like, don't ask questions way ahead of the presentation, friends. Just calm down for a bit if you are ahead in the presentation. I told you to stay ahead so that you all can, you know, be on the, like, be a steps ahead and then come back here and help others but if you are ahead just wait for that a minute i'm going to explain you that. i'll explain that right okay all right all right so you all can see the file beat.yml uh you know file on your computer it should be there oh everyone friends harshal is here i didn't see him just give a warm welcome to Harshal for a bit. Harshal is another one of our coaches in Major League Hacking. Let's welcome him. Awesome. Amazing. Great. So let's see. Talking about file B. Now you can see the file B.yml file. At this point, uh, you can see all these files. Now we're going to add your account details to connect it to Elastic. And we're going to navigate uh, through this files, right? So you need to figure out, like, find the folder, the unzipped folder that you have created, and then open the file b.yml file in a text editor. Simple steps. Take it one at a time, friends. Don't panic at all. It's very simple and easy once you get the hang of it. So if you're in the process of downloading and unzipping that file, do it. Run those commands. You will see this file on your laptop. All right, now that we are here, so let's talk about the file beat.yml file. Have you all opened the file beat.yml file in your text editor? Friends, let me know in the comment section if you are done with that step. Awesome, amazing, great. So now that it's open in the text editor, let's talk about the file beat.yml file. Scroll down to the Elastic Cloud section, right? It's uh, on, around in line 158 that you can see. And uh, let's not trouble Sashika. Are you here to trouble me? I'm such a, like I'm such a sweetheart. Is it in comment section? Tell Harshal that I'm your favorite coach. <laughs> oh my goodness! All right, no, that's not worry. If you opened up in VS Code, that's absolutely fine. It's like a text editor of your choice. Absolutely fine. All right, let's talk about file beat. Yeah, all right, so we were talking about file beat.yml file. It's at line number 158. And you can see a bunch of other things there. So scroll down to where the cloud ID and cloud auth is present. Yay. <laughs> see, Harshal, I told you. <laughs> all right. All right, I'm just kidding, friends. I'm just kidding. You all love all the coaches. I know that. <laughs> No need to pick sides. Uh, Harsha and I just be on some of that. Like sometimes you just you know do that couple of things where we pull each other's leg. That's it. That's absolutely fine. It's just a friendly fight. <laughs> All right. So let's talk about the Elastic Cloud. Right. We're gonna talk about the Cloud ID and Cloud Auth. Remember that in the beginning of this present, like not the beginning, but just about in the middle of it, I asked you to save the password 
the one that I told you was really, 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 really important. Remember, remember, right? So from that, you need to pick your password and then add your password to the cloud, cloud auth. And in your dashboard, I'll show you where you can find the cloud ID. All right. All right, so you remember your Elastic Dashboard, not the Kibana Dashboard, the Elastic Dashboard. Let me show you that. Yeah, that's commented out. We'll uncomment it and we'll add uh, that to our, you know, file. One second. So, all right, do you see this Elastic Cloud Dashboard that you have? I mean, mine looks different, but there is your cloud out. I really see that. You can copy this. This is the Elastic ID that we looked at, this one. This is your cloud out. Can you see it? It's in the Elastic Dashboard, not the Kibana one. I hope that that was helpful. Let me know. Great. Awesome, amazing. So add your password that you had. Add your uh, cloud ID that I just, like, I, I, you saw how I got, that, got it. So you, you have to get your own cloud ID. Add your cloud ID and your password. Oh, it was fast. Do you want me to share it again? Thank you so much for joining us, Harshal. We'll see you later. All right, I'm going to share it again. I'm going to help you out. Wait one second. All right, this is the first cloud dashboard that you saw, right? Uh, can you see it? Cloud dashboard? Absolutely right. Following along. Cool. And in that cloud dashboard, you can see a cloud ID here. Do you see it? This one. Got it? All right. I'm going to stop screen share, come back to the slides. OK. Let's see. There you go. All right. All right. So I'm going to cover up a bunch of other things now. Let's talk about that. So you place your cloud auth ID, you place replace your password, and then you pay close attention to all of those quote marks, right? There, there should be that. And you add your ID in that. So a couple of things. If you have problem editing those files, and if you're not able to save those or a bunch of other things with those files, that is due to admin errors, right? You need to make a copy of that file, and then you'll be able to edit it. All right, just a quick debugging tip for you all, friends. So it's not on cloud and deployments. Uh, just open your own cloud dashboard. It should be on the main page. Under deployments, it should be secure under security deployment, if you can see that. If you are on deployments, it should be under security deployments, the first step. All right. So, all right. If you have done with this, let me know if you're done with this step. Let me know in the comment section. And now we're going to enable Apache. Uh, you need to run both of these files in your, uh, like, in these commands in your terminal. The first one is the file bead modules enable Apache command. That is for Mac. The other one is the file bead.exe modules enable Apache command for the Windows. Back in your terminal window, you need to run one of these to enable the Apache. Uh, if you're a Mac user, Windows users, and for Linux, instructions are on the Elastic website. Sorry, I don't have a Linux to, uh, OS with me so that I can show you. You need to like travel back to that and get those instructions. There are a couple of things. Yes, absolutely right. You should put it in the uh, You can install Firebeat. Do you want to get some help in, uh, like ask what exactly did you face? If you just missed out a couple of steps, you can head over to hackme.ac slash elastic workshop and follow along. The participation slides are there. That's what I mean. All right. Let me know if you've enabled Apache. And now we're going to get some data. So before we do that, I want you all to tell me if you have completed the previous step, which was enabling Apache. Everyone, comment section. Let me know if you're done with this step. I'm going to wait for a minute here. 
and then we're gonna work oh somebody's already downloaded the logs i can see that lovely amazing you're way ahead of all of the others and i'm absolutely proud of you and able to pass you once you have been able to marshal let me know if you're facing any issues comment section is your friend just add a comment there Enable the Apache. All right. I'll see a bunch of, uh, you know, comments of enabling Apache. Some of you have not done. So I see uh, like three people have already done it. Three of you have already done it. And then, no, you just need to follow the steps that I just mentioned on how, if you're asking how to enable it, the commands are up on screen. Just run these commands and you'll be good to go. Are you still getting kicked out of Kibana? Um, I mean, I'm not sure why it is that you're facing this issue. So what happens there? Uh, like you click on open Kibana and it just exits you, like logs you out. Right. I mean, all I can say is you have to like try again. I'm not sure why you're facing this issue because it's working for everyone else. Kibana is opening up. Something went wrong. I see. Uh, I mean, I can ask you to try and register from different email ID. Did you ever use this email ID in Elastic uh, to create an account before? I mean, is your trial currently expired? This is what I'm asking. All right, let's see. So I'm going to walk you through a bunch of steps here again because I see that a couple of you are facing some issues. So I just need to make sure you did not miss any step. So I'm going to walk you through. Welcome to Kibana again. There are five slides. I'm going to be quick. If you missed a particular step, try that again. All right, everyone, I can see a bunch of you are facing issues. So I'm going to start from here so that you all can because I can see that a com like around 10 people have commented that they have enabled Apache. So you might have missed some one step or the other if you're facing those issues, right? I'm going to give you a couple of debugging tips in between because a lot of you are facing those issues. But if that is the case, this is a if your file permission is denied, make a copy of that file and then edit it. That's an admin uh, issue, administration issue. That is something that uh, might occur on Windows. Right. So click on Add Data, select Logs, and then Apache Logs. Very easy step. Once you are in the keyboard, uh, in this dashboard, you need to download FileBeat. Now, this in this particular file, you have to check which operating system you have. If you have Mac OS, Windows, Linux, and go on to the like, you know correct tab, and then run the commands. You open the terminal window for Mac, and you open the PowerShell for Windows. Search for PowerShell for Windows, and you run that PowerShell as an administrator so that it gives you that access, right? Now you have to follow the steps on download and install FileBeat. For Mac, you need to enter the curl commands. For Windows, you need to zip, download the zip folder, unzip it, and then run the commands. Right? Now, if you're facing any issues up until here, I hope not because it was just zipping and unzipping, and then you have to run those commands that are already listed up on the page. And then uh, a lot of you folks could see the file.yml file, a file, filebeat.yml file. So I hope that this was all easy for you. If you are not able to, uh, if you're facing problems with this particular one due to administration errors, if you're getting that error, file permission denied, admin errors, stuff like that, just make a copy of the file and then you should be able to edit and save it. All right. Okay, work for command. Awesome, amazing. And while I'm scrolling through all of this, if someone mentioned something in the comment section, I want others who've already enabled Apache to help them so that I can keep a tag of some of them and you can take some of them. So that we are on time, everyone. We have to do this together. Great. Now, you just need to go down, scroll down your Elastic Cloud section, and around line 171, you should see your cloud ID and your cloud auth. The ID should be the one where I just show you. It should be in your Elastic dashboard from where you can copy that. And your cloud auth is your elastic password, the one we saved on earlier. Correct? If you're having problems, again, this is an uh, this is an admin error. If this is an admin error, copy the file, and then you should be able to edit it. And as easy as that, after that, you run this enable Apache command. 
right? For if you're using Mac, make sure that the command is right. If you're using Windows, make sure that the command is correct. And this is how you should do it. Back in your normal window, you can enter one of these commands. For instance, Linux, you should check out the Elastic website and follow those steps. Correct, correct. All right. All right. Once again, quick check, everyone, because we are running a couple of minutes late. So I want to know where you all stand with this one. I want to know if you are all done with this step. If you've already commented before, comment again. Let me know if you've already enabled Apache. Mention that in the comment section like right now. Done. I want to see a bunch of dance here, and I'm going to move forward from that. If you've commented before, comment again. Let me know if you're done and enabled Apache. All right, great. All right, OK. OK. Done, done. And thank you so much, Ashwin, for helping out. I think I missed a doubt there, and you helped him. All right. Amazing. Now let's get some data, friends. Now we got to download some mock data that we can use. So we're all set up to use. We need some data. We've created example log files to use. You need to visit MLH localhost slash elastic data. MLH local dot host slash elastic data. This is the comment. Uh, I mentioned that in the comment section. MLH local dot localhost slash elastic data, and you should be able to log into those files. We're all set up. Now we need some data. So you go into this URL and download that data for yourself. Just as soon as you visited, the download should be should be like should begin. And normally, as I mentioned, this state this data would come from a web server and the setup would be the same. But we've generated this for you and we'd be using this data as our ingest source. All right. Because we want some mock data to actually help us. All right. And if you open up that log data in a text editor, what's in it? What's in it? Friends, you open up that log data, what do you see? You see a bunch of text files. There are tens of thousands of lines of codes of network log, uh, not codes, uh, network logs. And get is the request to a web server for a website, which you can see which is being used there. This means people who have requested content from the site, it will contain information about the request originated from like the IP address, timestamp, country, and more. So this is what the data contains, right? It contains data from, from IP address to country, to timestamp, and a bunch of other things. So I hope you all can see that. All right. So you're investigating the log data. You can see that file right here. And you see, OK, I can see that you're all done with the logs. You can have downloaded the logs. Let's, let me talk you, like, walk you through the data change again. What's the URL again? The URL for downloading log data is, you can find it up in the comment section. It's mlslocal.host slash elastic dash data. <laughs> this log does not have pizza orders. I, I think I hope not. I've not actually seen all, like the entire log base, but from what I've seen, it does not contain pizza, pizza orders. That's a Domino's breach. <laughs> Finally, so you all have enabled Apache, and I can see that. All right. Oh, good morning, Adam. Adam is here joining us uh, this time. Everyone, please welcome Adam. He is from Blahaj Bank, a great community member, of course. All right. So coming back on the presentation, uh, you are already investigating your log data. You've opened it up in the text editor, and you see what's there. You see 10,000 lines of network logs, and you see what it means. Now let's talk about let's talk about what we're going to do with this one. You need to open the modules.d folder, not the modules, the modules.d. Please make sure there's a modules.d folder in your uh, in your folder in your unzipped file, right? You need to open that, and then you need to open apache.yml. All right, open apache.yml, and then make changes to it. Now, we need to add the variable paths, which means the path to your downloaded data. You should know where you have saved your data. It should be in the download fo folder by default. If you've changed the location, please make sure you add that location in your, very, uh, in your bad paths, right? For Windows, it should be something like c hash, users, Dora, downloads, 
you know, access logs, something like that. You should have your own username. Don't forget the dash before the file path. It's very important and important to note that there are no quotes around it. Now make sure to make your disable the log errors, the enabled should be false under the error. So these are the two steps. I'm gonna wait here a minute. Please make sure you're all on the same page, friends. Oh, you can't see my screen? Oh, the link for slides is again on the screen. It should be elasthackp.ac slash elastic workshop. Scroll down and should be there should be a participant slides. Okay, all right. Now make these two changes. First, change the variable parts and second, enabled false. Yeah, you might have to make a copy to edit it if you are facing any issues, but it should be able to work properly for you. Cool. All right. So, Ashwaka, did you join, rejoin the Hajj Gang for every? I think I have not joined a, gang, a, a guild yet, but I've, it, if I'm going to, like, I'm going to join one soon, and that's going to be the Hajj Gang for anyone who's asking. Yes, Adam, I'll be a part of the Hajj Gang this time as well. Great, amazing. Uh, all right. All right, let's talk about launching FileBeat now. And this is, I'm telling you, this is one of the most, like, I know that this was a little hard, but from now on, it's going to be very easy and pretty simple for you all. All right, so we launch FileBeat back in your terminal window. Let's launch everything. Once again, enter one of these commands. This might take a minute or two. And if you see an error setting up ML for Apache ECS, it's expected. It's just because you're on a trial version of Elastic, and that's absolutely all right. Uh, so you want to run the Mac commands and the Windows commands. Head to your terminal window and enter these commands one by one. If you're in Linux, follow the instructions on Elastic website. These are not the instructions for you. You have to wait for a minute or two uh, you know, for these commands. While waiting, remind folks that uh, remind. I want to remind you all that FileBees is going to help us upload our log data uh, to use in Elasticsearch. Now, this step is setting up that FileBeat and launching that to connect our Elastic account and Kibana dashboard and then load our data. OK, all right. Friends, I hope that this one is pretty cool for you. Let me know if once you have launched FileBeat. All right, I'm going to wait exactly for a minute because we're short on time a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to wait exactly a minute for, and give you all a minute to set up. And as soon as that's up, I'm going to move forward for a bunch of other steps. If you have any questions, you can ask those. If you're facing issues otherwise, like for example, you want to review those slides, you have access to the slides. It's on hackb.ac slash Elastic Workshop. Head over to that link and then scroll down. There should be a participant slide section. You can follow along with me. OK, so once you are done with this step, rush back here and let me know. OK, OK, I'm going to wait for another minute. All right, meanwhile, I'm going to show you the previous slide just to make sure that you all have done with that. For this one, apache.yml file, change the variable path uh, to the variable path that you downloaded your logs. The enable should be false. Save the file. And then this one, all right. So, and then this one where you need to run your commands. Great. Amazing. So once you're done, let me know that you're done in the comment section. Like real quick, friends, this is, uh, if you have a warning which says that, you know, error setting up ML Apache, that's just because, again, you are on a trial version of Elastic, so ignore that. All right. So now that you're done, let's check if everything is working. Back in your browser, click on Check Data, and then uh, you'll see that you'll see the slide where 
it should be all ready. The module setup is that data successfully received from the module. As soon as you see this, let me know in the comment section. Friends, waiting here for another minute. Let me know in the comment section. Uh, and as soon as you have some data, let me know that. Yeah, so it's rolling dashboard. Amazing. Okay, all right, done, received data. Awesome, amazing. Incredible, incredible, incredible. So as soon as you verify that functionality, let me know that you've received that data. You, Oh, you already got your first plan, amazing. You are quite fast, dead shot guy. Now we have some data, great work. Let's dive deep and explore it. So I'm gonna explain you what it entails and then we're gonna capture the flags real quick, all right? So. Kibana, it looks a little empty. That is because all of our logs are from 2020. And in the top right, we need to change the date and time. So there should be an absolute tab. Modify it to January 1st, 2020, and then click Update. Very simple. Change the date, friends. Change the date. Uh, if you're loading your dashboards, as soon as you do so, it might see it might seem empty. That's because you need to update the date. So the date should be 2020, uh, January 1, 2020, and click on Hit on Update. All right, I'm gonna wait a minute, wait a minute. Very simple, easy, click on absolute uh, and then modify it to January 1, 2020 and then hit update. Let's talk, like while you do so, I'm gonna talk about the dashboard real quick. Now all of our data is displayed in Kimana, right? And there are some of the information that you see. You see geographical locations, requests, you see file access, you see browser type, you see operating system. And now that we have our data, now let's go and check out the same app and we're going to talk about more of that. So there are a bunch of things that you see here and this is what Kibana is all about. So when we, uh, I'm going to talk to you about exploring Elastic Security as well. We're going to talk about you know what the Kibana dashboard has for you. And while I'm giving you that overview, make sure you update that date so that you have all the data. All right? Correct? So update the date. So if you have, uh, if you have all the data, and I'm gonna wait for a minute here. So while I give you a tour of Kibana dashboard, let me know once you've updated the data and you can see the data, right? I'm just gonna give you an overview here. Nothing major, I'm not giving out away any steps, all right? So in the hamburger icon, you can see security and you can see overview, there are a bunch of other things. And you can also see, this is your Kibana dashboard, the geographical locations, file access, browser types, operating systems, bunch of other things that you can see here, right? So. Once you're exploring Elastic Security, uh, this is what you need to do. You need to scroll down to Security and click Overview. All right? Then once you are there, uh, you need to make sure that the date is January 1st, 2020. If you have not done that, do it right now. Kibana is the UI that we're using to explore our data and understand and visualize it better. All right? All right. If no data appears, select the untitled timeline, which is at the bottom of the screen. And the all, you know, you can tap all data sources and ensure that it's file beat dash star. Uh, the data source should be file beat dash star. If the data isn't appearing, that's because you haven't set the time correctly. If the time is correct and there is still no data, ensure that the file beat star is your data source, uh, the data source under all data source menu, and it should be added automatically. Pretty easy, very simple step. If you are getting an error, like setting up ML setups error, uh, that is is not, uh, if you're setting that, getting that warning, that's basically a warning, not supposed to be an error. Uh, the reason that you're getting that warning is because you're on a trial version. So just let me come back on your browser and work through the file. Sounds good, everyone? All right, let's talk about some of the other steps. Now click on hosts. There should be a tab, which is hosts, and you should take a look at the host and that should be you. So you should you know, note down your own host name. Uh, now these logs are said will be coming from different servers. For this, com for this workshop, we just use our own computer. So in that host sections, you can see your own device. This is where uh, they upload, you, know, you upload the access logs via file feed. So make a note of your host name and we'll use it shortly. Uh, since I'm and, and confused if you're facing a bunch of other issues from uh, like previous steps, like way previous steps, I'll recommend that you come back and follow along with me on the workshop sites here so that you understand what it is that needs to be done. And then I'm going to help you on your Discord later. Sounds good? 
I think you're facing some other issues apart from this that might be specific to your device. All right, friends, let's talk about exploring the Elastic Security tab. Now you can take a look at the Networks tab, right? This is where you can see that a bunch of data is uh, log data, and you can see where it is originated from. And you can see where you know a bunch of network things have been coming from, and they, this includes IP addresses from that location. Now, this is the log data displayed geographically. Okay. Now we talk about exploring Elastic Security, right? I'm going to talk about detection tab. In this tab, you can see that you can add a bunch of rules here, a bunch of rules rules there. Uh, it's a log searching way which you, in which you can use Elastic to mod monitor any suspicious behavior that you see any other thread that you can see. So this is the detection tab where you can add rules to flag new data. That could be a potential security threat. And some rules include that, you know, the log request contains no user agent field or an unusual Linux username, anything else like that. These are pre-built rules from Elastic. You can write your own, just to be clear. And by setting these rules, you uh, incoming log data that breaks your rules can be flagged immediately. So there are a bunch of things that you can do here, and this is how you do it. Now, let's investigate the log data. Let's check out the timeline offense. Click on the untitled timeline label at the bottom of the screen. And once you click on that, you can see that there is an add field tab in the timeline. You search for your host, host name as the field, and put in your host name value, the name that we had from the previous slide. Remember, everyone, add your host name and then click on save. Right? Waiting for a minute, real quick here, friends. All right, friends, if you're facing issues with downloads and stuff like that because of your device errors and you're facing issues because of that, don't worry. Follow along the uh, presentation right now so that you understand how things work, what is happening, how it will turn out to be. And if we are following, like later, what we'll do is in the Discord server, we can follow along this presentation again and then complete all those steps. Sounds good, everyone? Yes, absolutely. But if you're working right now with me and you're on the same step, uh, just follow along and work on this. Right. So you add your field, search for your host name, and then add your value. Click on save. Later, you are investigating the log data. So now we can see that all the logs are updated via file feed. And this is how you can see the logs populating up. You can take a look right there. You expand the log and you scroll down to the source fields. These tell us the information about the get request from the website. The fields of interest to us would be the source. Now, this is where you can get the fake log request, where the user's from, the IP address, stuff like that. Hi, now, this is a very difficult search. And the, to, to browse these logs, if this was a raw text, would be incredibly difficult, incredibly difficult. So this one is where Kibana helps us to you know, visualize all of that data. Now, if you wanted to search, for example, a particular log from, a, some, some, from some IP address, all you need to do is drag that address into the query bar and click on search, and you can see the filtered data. It's that easy. So it's like all of this is like a query search. Am I correct? This is where Kibana query language comes in, friends. Kibana query language adds filters. This is, allows you to build custom filter queries. And you can, like, it'll give you suggestions as you type. So you build your query. Uh, you have a timestamp. You can use logical operators like greater than or equal to uh, to, you know, make those logical sounds. And this is where you can see it. Did you mess up in uh, some file? Yeah, start over some of the steps, revisit the slides. It's very, very simple. Now, so a couple of examples that I'm going to give you about Kibana query languages, like, for example, if you're going to show data for a user who's from UK or from France, so you can use an OR operator. Or you know, if you want to use, you can use the wildcard operator, which is the star. For example, machine OS win means any uh, log with machine OS value that starts with win. For example, Windows 7, Windows 10, this will return. Right? OK. You can also type in the KQL and tap in the search bar. Start typing in the fields, and it'll just build your queries automatically. And once you hit Enter, you can see the current filters. Now, from this point forward, we'll talk about capture the flag. And we're going to learn some flags for you all. Uh, I see that we have like about 10 minutes for this workshop, but we have like half an hour before our uh, game of sketchful.io starts. So I'm going to give you all of that 40 minutes to do those capture the flag challenges. But before we go into some of that, I'm going to give you 10 minutes for each flag. There are three flags there. So before we start off with all of that, I want you all to brush up those steps and then complete up those up until now. And if you have any questions, ask them those right now. I'm going to revisit some of them for about four more minutes. 
and then we're going to walk into the capsule of life challenges sounds good everyone that is something that i can do for you i hope that that is helpful all right let me know where you're at i'm going to scroll up some of the comments to see all right you're getting the same error not able to figure out how to solve this enable a master command shows an error can you tell me what error is it and if it's an error in which you know you are facing an error issue uh, that's probably because of el elastic trial version so just let it be if no data is received that is because the date is set incorrectly come back there in the untitled uh, in the version you need to select the date january 1st 2020. the filter is incorrect basically i'm gonna put in the link to elastic security page once again all right i'm gonna just put the presentation link So here it is, you have the presentation link. I just added that again. So I've added this because I understand that you, sorry. Yeah, I understand that you missed a couple of steps there. So you can follow along to whichever slide you missed your steps on. If, if this is your error that file beat XE is not recognized in an internal command, then probably because if you're using it on Windows, you've like removed a dash or probably on Mac. So the command you've entered is incorrect. And you enter the correct command. And if uh, it's not even showing, like, have you made those changes and saved that file? You might have copied it somewhere. Just make sure that it's copied at the correct place in the same folder. Itself. Cool. All right. Giving you one more minute to set it all up. Let me know once it's done. If some of you have already done it, I mean, now is the time to mention that in the comment section, all right? If no data has been received, uh, the step that you might have missed is the setting up the date setup. Just make sure you do so. Let me just pull up that page and then I'm going to show it to you last bunch of slides again. I'm going to take a minute and review all of those. Right. So this. Uh, Yeah, so you should be able to see this file, you know, where you have uploaded that data. Now, if you have that data, select absolute, select the date, pick up date, then you'll be, you'll be able to see that file. You go to securities, overview, you change that date here, update that date, you need to update those dates, and make sure that it's on untitled timeline, and the data sources is file beat dash star. Click on hosts, click on host name. You can see that this is just a bunch of us exploring all those different tabs. Untitled timelines, and then you see here where you can add your field as a host name. Just a quick overview of the slides I'm giving you. I'll explain all of those. It's there with you. You can just follow along. All right, friends, are you ready for Capture the Flag Challenges? I see that someone did complete a bunch of challenges earlier, but that's all right. I'm going to give you five minutes to complete all of those challenges. Very simple, pretty easy. Once you're through with that. Great. Uh, so what I want you to that is to visit happy.ac slash elastic workshop. You should have the slides there. And in that size, you can check on the all the commands. And you can also check some of the other steps that we did after that. All right, so let's talk about capture the flag, friends. OK. So the challenges. Now, since we're short on time, we're going to make this real quick. So I want you to be on top of your toes and think straight. Now, we have our logs. We can put them to use. We're going to do some capture the flag challenges. It's a great way to test your skills and often used in cybersecurity challenges, right? So you visit challenges.mlh.io, and you log in with the MLH account, and you can see your first challenges. So the link is challenges.mlh.io. And once you're logged in, you can scroll down to the Elastic Security Challenge and select the first challenge and then get started. As you see, if you see that first challenge, you would see that it's the uh, unauthorized access thing. I'm going to explain that challenge to you. So you go to challenge.mlh.io and you can see that challenge, but I'm going to explain that to you in the next slide. So 
the first flag that you need to capture is that your team un uh, detected an unauthorized access to an employee only resources at 104 a.m server time on may 18. you need to find out what happened the test is timed which means you only have five minutes to find out what happened and you need to use elastic to solve the challenge and find the flag right now you have five minutes to solve it and challenge link i'm going to give you that challenge link in the comment section it's challenge dot mlh dot io don't worry friends if you're still facing issues with the previous step you're working on those challenges uh and while some of the other friends work on those challenges you can work on setting up and getting your data and then follow along capturing the flag later sounds good everyone please 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 continue at your own pace this is not something that you need to finish in two hours but it's recommended all right now uh if like if you're having a tough time that's all right it's just something which is very new to you but try out something like try it. like what it is that you think of it's a thing that i would like to point out and it's just a hint note that it's the server time so you should be looking at the timestamp for the server and not for you right right I mean, I'm going to bink you with that because it's another hint that I'm going to give you right there. And it's helpful for you to look at the traffic during that time period. That doesn't match the rest of the traffic happening. So you need, you know that, right? Mm -hmm. So just try and check on that. I'm going to give you five minutes and about four minutes are left. I'm going to put on a timer for that one. Okay, friends, tell me where you are at. I gave a pause for like a minute and you are trying to sway away. You're getting distracted from the task at hand. That is something we'll not accept. So where are you at in that challenge? Tell me what you're trying to achieve here. What are you trying to do? And I'm going to help you out achieve that. And don't worry if you have like no clue whatsoever. Just wait for a couple more minutes and I'll give you that solution. You, you'll get how you do it. And trust me, once you understand how we captured the first flag, the other two will seem like really simple to you. I mean, you'll be able to do it in minutes is what I'm trying to tell you. And meanwhile, I'll try to put on some music. So in that above link, you should download uh, the challenge. Dot, like, you, you should you should actually visit that and you'll see the first flag. It's the same flag that is up on the Twitch live stream here, so you can see it. Mirror image, where it is? It's here. It's here. Right. So, unauthorized access to employee resources at 1:04 a.m. server time, May 18th. This is your flag. You need to find out the flag. This is the challenge, and you need to capture where it is. You need to capture who did it. All right, friends, you tried it. That's all right. I'm gonna give you another minute, final minute, and then I'm gonna, gonna I'm gonna tell you about this flag. All right. Okay, all right. Let us see. What is this flag that we are all talking about? I mean, thread hunting is absolutely interesting. And you'll see what I'm talking about in just a minute. Because right now, you thought that this is like a really, really tough challenge. And you might not be able to, sh like, you might be not be sure on how it is that you can, you know, capture this flag. It seems like the end of the world, doesn't it? Well, it's not. It's pretty easy. It's pretty simple. And I'm going to explain to you how we can achieve that. Very simple. So. Did you find the flag? Anyone, did you find the flag? I see so that someone else did at the beginning of this uh, CDF, but I'm not sure if you did find it. Let me know if you found the flag. All right, so while you're working on it, I'm going to give you a little bit of tips on how you can achieve that. So first, we've set the time to May 18th, 2020 at 104, which is the time of the hack. Make sure we sort that timestamp column and uh, May 18th dates 
so the May 18th dates are at first, right? Very simple. Set the time to May 18, 2020 at 104 and then sort it. Now, there's something that there's a there was a hint that I gave you, right? That hint was that the log entry, you'll see something strange that it is listed on your time zone and not the server's time zone. And example, it's there's a one hour difference, but you need to find out the server time is UTC time. So you need to find out the time difference you have from your place to the UTC time and then add that. So for example, it's six to nine hours behind from USA, depending on your region, five to nine hours for Asia, depending on whatever region you're at. And so if you are at this place, just make sure you enter the correct time. All right. If you are not able to try it yet, don't worry. You can try it out by, uh, after this presentation as well. These are some amazing flags. You have access to the slides and you can do this. I believe in you. So adjust the search to accommodate the difference in time zone. You can try searching like what my UTC off offset is and whatever that offset is. Use that and then you can find the first log result that will show you the original value uh, of the flag and the URL original field. You can see that. Right, right, right. Okay. Now, our attacker has accessed the admin map, if you can see that clearly. Now, once you make a search on these logs, you'll see that they have accessed the admin path, and these require a username and password to access. Mm, that is absolutely suspicious. They tried to attack, uh, you know, the attackers tried to access secure files in a variety of ways, and it normally involves tricking the authentication process in some way. And this is what they did it. So by finding out what the actual password is, this is how they can attack admin resources or brute, force way, brute forcing their way to finding the password or skipping the entire SQL injection. And these kind of attacks generally try to skip the password process altogether. So instead of validating for like a particular password input, they might trick the system into thinking that it's already authenticated and that the password entered isn't valid. So, I mean, I mean, is valid when it isn't. No, it just bypass the old security system, and this is how they do it. So perhaps the attacker has tried something else, right? Maybe, probably. So right now we got our first challenge, and you found the flag. You found the attacker, but this is where the second flag comes in, and this is the type of mindset I think you can develop while uh, threat hunting, right? So what you do, you should do is first. We saw that there was an attack. We found that attack. We found the attacker. Now, was this the first time that the this IP has done something malicious or has it done something else previously? Correct. This is something that you see. Now, this is the second flag. Now, since we are like really, really, really short on time, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to give you like too much time to think about it. I'm going to give you a minute or two, and then you can try it out. And then I'm going to talk about the solution. Because I understand uh, this might seem a little like redundant. Uh, while working into the workshop because uh, now all you need to do is capture those queries, capture those flags, and think about ways where you can, you know, fix this issue. So I'm going to give you five minutes, and then I'm going to try it out. Meanwhile, just a quick heads up, right after we end this, we're going to play a fun game of Sketchful.io. So if you feel like there's too much technical content for the day and you need to, like, take a break and just chill out a bit, why not play a game of Sketchful.io with me because I'm going to, I'm not sure if I'm going to beat you, but I'm going to certainly as well try and make it to the top of the leaderboard. Oh my goodness. I think I might need to call in the cavalry and get some help for detect, like figuring out what uh, images you're going to draw. But hey, that's what it is. All right. Now that you're working on this, I'm going to give you a minute or two more. Just quickly think about the ways you can capture the flag. Now you have that IP address. Think of the ways if you can drag that IP address from the original event up to the top and search. Huh. You can beat me in CDF, but not in Sketchful. I mean, I, I'm, in, I mean, I'm inclined to say we'll see about that. I'm inclined to say, but ugh, I'm not even sure how strong you are. Yes, there is a local host quiz, and I'll tell you about it at the end, Adam, of this workshop. Nice. All right. So now that your time's up, let me talk about capturing how we captured the second flag. Now, a thing that you missed, friends, and you might have missed that, is that you're not using, like, you're using filter in the previous one. You're filtering out a date, right? 
now this is a broad time period this is something we need to look at a different uh, point in time so again let's talk about the solution for the second flag now you drag the ip into the search query search that field change the date back to january 2020 this is a very 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 important step because then you'll not figure out who did it and when they did it and after that soon after that you will find a query two logs great take a look at the second entry because the first entry is the one that we already found out right so this uh, this is something that we already found out we saw that they already uh, you know used the same ip address to create like do something malicious right uh, okay one second friends let me just fix something there's an issue with the presentation it's not loading up to the next slide all right this should be fixed okay let's see okay so now once you have that you can see that there is a now this is a referral link like there's a url original link and that looks a bit strange it's different from the one you saw previously it's in base 64 now for those of you who don't know base 64 is an encoding technique they use that used to ensure the integrity of binary data sent over a string it converts binary into characters and that is how you see it right so this is a base 64 encoding and we're going to fix that right so if you throw the whole url into the decoder you'll get no response you need to pay, paste the one between the first dash and the second dash and that's when you hit decode and you have your second flag right that is actually as easy as sounds you have that second flag and you detected an attacker but we know how they did it they were they for the first person to try this one or just the person who got caught now your final challenge is to find out if anyone else has tried the same attack this is how we're going to do it so you see what we did there how we created a mindset of threat hunting first we saw that there was a breach in our system then we figured out if the same person who we found to have done the breach has ever done some of these things before and once we found out how they did it and when they did it we figured that are they the only person who you know who have tried to do a breach this way or were there others and this is how we found out that there were others who have absolutely tried to breach our way into the system and this is what they did so you need to find out if anyone else has tried the different attack and give you five more minutes to achieve that and meanwhile i'm going to answer a couple of questions i can see adam has a yes absolutely that was hannah's avatar i think i forgot to update the avatar when once i started the stream but it's all right i mean i love hannah it's all right she won't mind if i'm using her avatar for a minute there any other questions let me see no nope. so you got two more minutes to detect this one it should be a very easy this for this one you can use the kql which is the kibana query language to do the filtering of the url and use asterisk remember i told you that that's a wildcard entry that we have uh, what that means is that it's a wildcard character you can find partial urls all right once you're doing that let me just talk through you through it so we'll use the kql to search for other attacks on the url there is a star in the wildcard which means the urls contain that search term so you remove that ip address filter entirely you want to search for the url uh, and plug in that url for recovery plug in that url and find out who did it what they did it so you remove that so you type into the search bar a star wildcard which partial matches and make sure that the ip address field we added is removed from the previous challenge now great there is another log which means someone else did try to achieve that remember these are fake logs so these flags were generated for you to catch right so you got a strange url again a url encoding this is how words can be transmitted over url and there is a very strange coding of ors percentage 201 percentage 3d1 and stuff like that this particular statement is a url encoding of 1 equals to 1 now this is a sign of sql injection and it's a very common attack sql is a structured query language it's commonly used to manage database into input forms like forms logins anything else and you see the strange thing about that uh, about this one right what 1 equals to equals to 1 means anyone what does this particular statement one equal to equal to one means it's a very common attack and you must be able to guess what it does 
Yes, absolutely correct. So Ashwin is absolutely correct. One equals two equals to one means it's always true. It returns true immediately. This is the way that you can, you know, skip uh, the login authentication process entirely. So this is always true. And this is an attack vector, which means that it's a path for a hacker to do something malicious, web plugins or anything else like that. This can be a, a you know, an effective way to attack vector for hackers as they can introduce new security flaws. Yes, it skips the auth entirely. So this is another flag that we just captured. And once you decode that URL from the base 64, you get to see our flag. And this is the last one. This is the last pack from the previous challenge. And congratulations, you completed all the challenges, folks. And this is how we're going to wrap up our workshop. What we're going to do is I'm going to give you a recap of the bunch of stuff we did. And if you are a bunch of folks who were not able to complete all of these challenges or were you know, stuck in some part, don't worry. I'm there in Discord to help you out. If you're facing issues, let me know. You have access to the slides. Brush upon that. It's very, very simple. Yes, of course, I'm going to share those slides again. Real quick, there you go. The link should be in the comment section. It's also there on happy.ac slash elastic workshop. You can find the link there. And don't worry, I mean, since I can see Sanskar is already in tears. Don't worry, Sanskar. We'll help you out to achieve that and learn something new with this one. I hope that you were able to understand the entire workshop. I mean, that's the main goal learning something new. You can try it later as well. But if you understood it, that's half the journey. All right, so let's talk about the recap. So SIM, we use SIM, yeah, right? We use SIM, which is security information and event management. This is a vital part of Elastic Security and Security at Last Day. This is how we do it. It involves preventive security measures, analyzing logs, scores, and visualizing everything. Elastic Security is free open source and to equip, it's used to equip analysts in preventing, detecting, and responding to threats and using endpoint security, threat hunting, cloud monitoring, and many more. So. What does it mean? What we need to do after the workshop? The next steps. You should try adding your own device logs to Elasticsearch stack. Remember, there were so many things that you can do using Azure, uh, Apache logs that we saw, Elasticsearch logs, a bunch of other things. You can use that. Also, you can investigate metric beat. Now, what is metric beat? Metric beat is another method of intrusion detection. It's a lightweight shipper that you can install on your servers to periodically collect metrics from operating systems, services running on the server, stuff like that. You can also create rules to proactively flag potential behaviors. So all of this is something that you've already seen. And this is something that I mentioned when I was explaining uh, all of those slides, if you followed along correctly. You can uh, try all of these things to you know, take your in, uh, knowledge forward. Now, what did you learn today? And this is the quiz that everyone's been waiting for and Adam's been waiting for as, hell, uh, as well. So I'm just going to put that into the comment section. Quiz. All right. So visit mlhlocal.host slash quiz. And this is another link that you can use to uh, finish this. All right. So you cre we created a quick quiz so that you can you know check what you learned from this workshop. If you've not even been able to follow along, that's completely all right. You were able to learn something new today because you were, uh, you were able to understand how these dashboards work and how these things work. And now, once you try it, it'll be, it'll be very easy for you to continue this workshop. So mlhlocal.host slash quiz is a way for you to test that and put that knowledge to use. Please visit that link and let me know your test scores in your respective guilds, and I keep a lookout for that. I think there's a chat room that we all use in Discord for these purposes. So just go ahead, visit that, and just add your uh, scores all right and that is all for the elastic workshop who friends we did it now please give me a yay i mean i did an incredible job job you did an incredible job at going forward with this workshop if you have not checked in yet please do so uh, by going into happy.ac slash elastic workshop Yes, of course, you can trouble me in MLS Discord after the stream in case you're stuck. I'm absolutely there for you if you are facing any issues with this workshop whatsoever. So give me a yay in the comment section because we did it. I can see a lot of members were active and you stayed through the end and you watched it through. Uh, all right. So, OK, which school and organization hosted this event? It's no school or organization. Like It's like 
Major League Hacking hosted this event. This is an organization. It's not a school. And we are here to empower hacker community, as you can see from the brimming comment section, that we are a great hacker community that loves to participate in challenges and work our way through these incredible workshops. Yes, woohoo, everyone, great, amazing. So a couple of other things, a uh, couple of other things that I would want to mention. If you have not registered or checked in yet, please, please make sure you do so. That is how you earn a point, and that is how you make it to the top of the leaderboard. All right. If not already tweeted yet, you can use this. You can use Adorate ML Hacks. You can use the hashtag in it, and you can use Adorate Sashrika for, which is my tag. My name is Sashrika. Hello, everyone. And you can use this to make a tweet. I'm going to see you all in about 15 minutes again. And now we just stop everything technical. All right. The technical part is done for the day. You did your job. You did it well. And you were able to capture all the plans. So what we'll do today is in about 15 minutes, we'll play a game of sketchful.io. And we'll see who makes it to the top of the leaderboard. I am all set and paced up. I hope you are too. And there are a bunch of other workshops here. We have a Builder Calculator workshop at 6.30 p.m. IST. And then you can use that. Oh, the hashtag is MLH in it. Did I type that incorrectly? Hi, Rublin. Woohoo. Great, great, amazing. All right. Use that hashtag and then, OK. And then make a tweet. If you make a tweet, please make sure you tag me so that I can retweet all of your lovely tweets and I can see all of you who participated in my workshop. Thank you so much for participating. And I'm going to see you all in about 10 minutes for this game. And it's going to be great. So that's it for me. Hi, my name is Sasha I'm from Major League Hacking. And then I'm going to see you in about 10 minutes again. Uh, so just, all right, get some rest, friends. I mean, it's been a long workshop. Thank you so much for joining in and have a great day.